Strike me down, Joswin, and your conversion to the dark side will be complete. Woo! If we got a hot one for you tonight there, folks. I'm the man you may know as Z with Our Views Will Kill You, and we're going to talk about Joss Whedon a little bit here because, as you may know, we've been covering this story before. We've talked a little bit about the Ray Fisher accusations up here. If you want to go back and take a look at it, I'd like to remind you that if you could please like and subscribe, that would be fantastic. You'd really help us out here as we are a small channel trying to grow, and it comes from you. Liking, sharing, it's the best thing you can do. But anyway, let's get on to Joss Whedon. Who is the immortal scumbag? Did you ever realize that you recorded an 18 minute video and then thought back like, wow, I rambled for way too long about this. So this is take two on this one. But again, we're gonna talk about Joss Whedon responding to Justice League allegations. This is the IGN article. It does a really good job of like briefly summing everything up. There's a New York Magazine article that you can see on Vulture. Uh, we'll go into it a tiny bit because there's one specific thing I wanna go over with that one. But uh, it should say, just want to say right here, it should say former filmmaker Joss Whedon because if this, this dude does anymore, he does not deserve a second chance. I don't really understand what the point of this article is. I think it's him trying to show some attrition and give reasons as to why he was doing the things that he does. Ultimately, I'll also read his final quote to you. I don't think he thinks he's responsible for what he did. And... So basically, to sum everything up, he took over Justice League duties following Zack Snyder's departure due to a sudden death in the family. His quote is, they asked me to fix it, and I thought I could help. And now he claims it's one of the biggest regrets of his entire life. Interesting. Is it because the quality wasn't good? Or was it because of some of the accusations that came up which caused your ultimate downfall? So what he's claiming is he thought he was only going to be writing and advising and soon it became clear that they'd lost faith in the Snyder vision one hit him to take full control so he did 40 uh, days of, of reshoots and he said things were tense from the start uh, an unnamed crew member shared to the New York um, it didn't the change didn't go down well at all he announced to them and he had never worked with a ruder group of people uh, Gal Gadot, uh, apparently he claims that Gal Gadot said he didn't understand how superhero movies got made. You gotta remember, this is the man who did Avengers 1 and 2, whose ego is enormous. You can't imagine how big this man's ego is, and, and it'll be clearer later. Gal Gadot claimed that he threatened her career if she didn't read the lines that he wrote or failed to follow his direction. There's definitely a scene that clearly seems to have been cut because it's a stunt double. If you remember, there's a scene where in the uh, Whedon version, Flash falls on Gal Gadot or Wonder Woman and grabs her chest. That's a body double. I don't think that's her. So um, so his suggestion as to he, him not threatening people is that she understood him. And this is him going scorched earth. I mean, this is just an indication to what scum this man is. English is not her first language, but I tend to be annoyingly flowery in my speech. In one sentence, you can sum up what kind of human being Joss Whedon is because he goes, English is not her first language, an insult and demeaning to Gal Gadot. And I tend to be flowerly, annoyingly flowery in my speech. So you're also saying that you're so eloquent that sometimes it's irritating to people because you just speak so well, Joss Whedon. You're so amazing. So they were arguing over a scene that she wanted cut. He jokingly told her that if she wanted to get rid of it, she would have to tie him to a railroad track and do it over his dead body. Apparently he put it in there anyways, what, I, what it seems like. You also have the Ray Fisher issue who's been very negative about his experience. He said his role was downsized. There's a, there's a specific thing that Whedon says. He says, it feels like I'm taking notes right now and I don't take note or I don't, I don't like taking notes from anybody, not even Robert Downey Jr. Way to insult a young actor and being like, I don't, I'm too good for you, man. This this young actor had developed and worked with, shot obviously a ton of footage with Zack Snyder. They had a vision of what the character would do and where it would go. And then he totally just dismisses this guy, right? 
Uh, he also accused him of abusing his power, and he had he had told the, the director that he wasn't happy about digitally changing the, the skin tone of their color. He claims that the studios had given uh, given the movie a whole lighter look, brightening up everything in post production, including all the faces, and that he cut down the story because logically it made no sense, and he simply felt Fisher's acting was not great. He literally says, "We're talking about a malevolent force here." We're talking about a bad actor in both sense, senses. Crazy, crazy rude. He also talks about the allegations uh, because Fisher went scorched earth and was like, oh, well, there's all these allegations from you from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and a bunch of other shows that you've done. Well, Chris Carpenter had spoken up about him and said that he created a hostile work environment since his early career, calling her fat and making fun of some of her religious beliefs. He insults her as well in this article. He says, Most of my experiences with charisma were delightful and charming. She struggled sometimes with her lines, but nobody could hit a punchline harder than her, and he did not call her fat, even though he had called other women fat. There's a lot more uh, going on here. They're saying that they go into detail with his career, including his time working on Firefly, his younger days when he was not as civilized, his denial of allegations of physical abuse and relationships with with uh, with actresses who, while he's married. So here's what it boils down to, and I want to show you the article. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to go through two parts. If you want a breaker, uh, a, a greater breakdown of this, I can. I can get into the whole thing. Let me know below. Tell me in the comments what you think. Do you think Joss Whedon should ever direct again? Should he be allowed back into Hollywood? I don't think so. This man is poison. This man is a narcissist. He's a maniac. He deserves to be let go. There, just one example of why he should be let go. On the set of Buffy, apparently there were, alle not allegations, but there was an unwritten rule that the one of the youngest cast members, Michelle Trachtenberg, who was 16 by the, 17, by the seventh season, was not allowed to be alone with her. Apparently there was an incident where he was in a locked door office with her and she came out shaken and no one will respond to it. She won't respond, her family won't respond. So we know something happened. But here's the, the part of the article that I thought was really intense because he asked about the affairs, the, the interviewer asked about the affairs on the set of Buffy. He said he looked worse, his eyes were faintly bloodshot. He, he says he felt terrible and you know, he goes why he, about about the affairs he, he says it messes up the power dynamic in, instead uh he didn't expand on that thought instead he quickly added that he felt he had to sleep with them that he was powerless to resist i being the the author of the story laughed again this is why this is not really well written it's not giving you full context of his quotes he goes i'm actually joking he said he had been surrounded by beautiful young women, the sort of women that had ignored him when he was younger and feared if he didn't have sex with them, he would always regret it. Looking back, he feels shame and horror, he said. I thought of something he had told me earlier. A vampire, he said, is the exalted outsider, a creature that feels less than everybody else and is also kind of more than everybody else. There's this insecurity and arrogance. They do a little dance. This man is just a maniac. He slept with employees, fans, colleagues. His wife found out and then wrote an open letter. You have to remember too, this man was a female feminist. He would go around fundraising for female uh, you know, causes, all sorts of stuff. The man is an absolute hypocrite. The worst of the worst, pretending to be woke, pretending to be this virtuous, virtue signaling person, in the meantime, basking in the glory of his own personal brilliance, while at the same time denigrating his wife and his marriage and being an absolute total scumbag everywhere to the point where, you know, underage minors might be involved, like allegedly, I have nothing to prove there, but seriously, even the way that he treated the actresses, and people go back to he wrote a script for Wonder Woman where he seemingly, you know, overly sexualized the whole thing. This is bonkers. Why they would give this man, like, I don't care. He can say whatever he wants. You can give him a platform. But what's the motive? What's he trying to do? Is he trying to beg, crawl his way? Is this how you get forgiveness? This, to me, is a, an atrocious attempt at it. There's His attrition is a joke. This is just Hollywood at its sickest. And... This needs to be snuffed out. So tell me what you think. Give me a little bit more feedback on this. If you'd like me to break down a little bit more of it, 
Uh, I really think there's more to go in here, but I wanted to give you a brief overview. Thank you so much for listening. If you like more of this, catch our other videos. You can also catch our full-length audio podcast, which is free on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those great places. We also live stream 7.30 p.m. Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. And, woo, this was a rough one. Really intense on this one, but I'm on to the next one. We'll see you around. Thank you.